Hi you guys, welcome to my little paintbrush. My name is Miss Cami, and I'm excited you're here today. We get to paint our cute lucky gnome together. I love this painting, it's super fun. So get ready to just enjoy your time creating along with me. Now just a few things before we begin. Remember you can pause this video, you can also fast forward or rewind, so don't feel like you have to keep up with me. I'm gonna keep a pretty steady pace, but you shouldn't feel rushed through this process. So go ahead and pause at any time, and you don't need to feel guilty about that. It's totally fine. Okay, let's jump right in. I'm gonna get a good large flat, and I'm gonna get it wet in some water. Our paint needs water. And here's my palette, pretty simple today, but we're gonna have a good time with it. The first thing I'm gonna do is pull some white over to my peachy skin tone, mix it a little bit in there, and then I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna fill in this cute nose. Oops, a little bit of water in my brush. You definitely need water, but not too much. Sometimes it gets a little drippy. Okay, so we're just going to fill that nose in just like so and then we're going to come down here to our cute little hands that are of course holding our clover this is not a four leaf I almost said a four leaf but obviously those are a little bit trickier to find all right, so we're gonna do these little hands just like this. Shape them in there. And before we move on, I'm gonna dip the corner of my brush into white paint, and I'm just gonna give a nice highlight to the nose and the cute little hands. See, so you can do this all in one step. Um, in fact, it's usually better when you wanna have any type of a blending happening to do it while your paint is wet. Okay, nice. I'm gonna rinse that color out and jump right into my background, which is gonna be a fun purple. I'm gonna scoop up a good amount of white and mix some purple. I want to leave some dark, so I'm not going to use the entire pile of purple. And at this point, you can go as light or as dark as you want your background to be. Just remember, your paint's going to dry darker on your canvas. Okay, so once you've got that paint the color that you want, we're just going to begin filling in our background. Nice big brush strokes. I always say this, but I start kind of away from my subject so I can really just put that paint on and then I'll move closer to it and slow down my brush stroke a bit. Notice how I do that though. I'm pressing all of my bristles. A lot of times we're intimidated by these big brushes but this is the best amount of control you can give yourself is when you use all those bristles and you press them down so you kind of fan them out and that gives you a really controlled brush stroke and a pretty clean edge. So that's just a tip for you. You know, a lot of times when we're new to painting, we're afraid of this big brush, and so we don't use it for what it's meant to be. And you should be able to use all those bristles and just really get a nice amount of paint on your brush and get a nice result. So don't be afraid of the paint here, and don't be afraid of the brush. Okay, we're going to come up to our little hat here. Same thing. See how I'm maneuvering my brush? 
to go in my favor here. You gotta do that. You gotta kind of use it to your advantage. And understand as you're going along that this is not the final step in the painting. Okay, so don't get to this point and just feel like you're ready to write it all off, which is typically what we do. We get to this point and we're like, this isn't working. Just stick to it. It's just a step in the process. Okay, so our background is in and I like to have a little fun with it. Before I wash the purple out of my brush, I'll put some of that dark purple on and I'll come up close and do some little shadows around my my gnome here and you can put these in wherever you like I just like to brush in a little bit of that darker purple in places it gives my background a bit more dimension it doesn't look as flat so this is totally optional maybe you're feeling really happy with the result that you have and you don't want to add anything else and that's the beauty of being the artist this is your masterpiece so you do not have to do anything that isn't speaking to you i just like to not have such a flat background myself so I like to go through and put these in. You can also do this with white if you're thinking you'd rather have a brighter background. You can go and lighten the areas closest to your gnome. But pretty simple. Now we're done with our background. Let's give our brush a really good wash. We're gonna work between purple and green and they are not the best of friends. Um, and we don't want to have a muddy situation. So we'll go ahead and give that a good wash. Okay, let's go to our hat and our clover. Okay, so we have a really pretty green right here and I wanna lighten that up just a touch. So I'm gonna scoot, I wanna keep some of the dark but I'm gonna pull some over and I'm gonna add some white, okay? And add some white to it just like this and this is going to be the color of our hat okay so I'm going to come in here and of course if you want to go even lighter sometimes I don't decide how light I want to go there we go until I have the paint on my canvas and then once I can see the color, I decide if I want to go lighter or darker. So if that's happening to you, that's okay. This would be the time to go lighter or darker before it dries. This would be a good time to decide if you like your color or not. If you get any purple, on your brush as you're getting up close to the edge here. If you get any purple on your brush, just wipe it out. Don't keep going. Um, otherwise, your brush will get that muddy color on it. And we're gonna do this little point and see, I'm just gonna use the toe of my brush to get that. So you can use this brush to get all the different areas. Now before I move on, I'm gonna go into that dark, just like we did around our gnome in the background. I'm gonna use that dark and kind of just meet up the edge of my hat here. And just add this fun bit around the hat. Your brush is feeling a little 
little dry. Mine certainly is. That means we need water, so just dab it in some water, loosen it up. Um, I can't stress telling people enough that your paint, this acrylic paint, is made to need water, okay? So use the water. I'll put a little bit of that dark green up in our little uh, point of the hat, but not too much because it's kind of tricky. I'll probably just focus in on the bottom there. We'll go through with a detail brush later and clean all that up. This is looking good though. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our clover. I don't want it quite this dark, but but close. I'm gonna mix some of that light green and mix it in with that dark until I get the color that I want. I want it to be darker than my hat, but I don't want it to be as dark as the original. And this looks about what I want here. So I'm gonna take this, yep, that's what I wanted, and I'm gonna fill in my clover, which is just like a combination of hearts, it feels like. You get here, remember you've got those little fingers holding on to it, so you don't want to mess that shape up. Come down here, same thing. This green and purple together, I love it so much. It reminds me of the Little Mermaid. <laughs> These two colors together. All right, okay, same thing. Before we move on, let's just go to that darker and give it a little shadow. It won't show up as much as it did in our hat, but it's still an important step. It kind of finalizes and cleans up our clover. Okay, again, you can see I have a little water on it. I'm pressing all my bristles, okay? I'm using all of my bristles for this. I'm not trying to just use the corner that I need. I'm using all of them. Okay, now if you're not happy with the coverage, and it really just depends on how much paint you've got on your brush and all that. If you're not happy with the coverage in your clover, green tends to need multiple layers. So if you wanna just let the first layer dry and then go back to it, that's totally fine. Just remember the longer that you, uh, the more times that you brush over an area, you're gonna to start to lift paint instead of lay it down. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's give our brush a super good wash. Okay, we're gonna be using white next, so we really don't want any of that green to come down. So I'm gonna make sure my brush is super clean. Now, I'm not gonna worry about painting my gnome's beard. If you wanna do that, that's fine. I tend to not do it, my canvas is white, unless I'm using a white that's obviously a shade off. I don't, but if you want to fill in your gnome's beard, go for it. I'm just going to load with white paint here on both sides of my brush, and then I'm going to dab a little bit of black on one corner, and I'm going to kind of push it around a bit and then pull it through my brush. I'm really going for a nice gray, okay? And we're going to come through and we're just going to add this nice bit of gray to our gnome. Now, this it can easily get out of control with the black. So what you need to do is just go back to your white anytime you're feeling that. Anytime you're feeling like, okay, I have a gnome with black hair and I didn't want that. 
Go back to your white and just really pull in that white and go over the same spot and you can see it just lightens it up. Okay, so don't, don't get too concerned if you have an overtake happening. Really push that gray, that black through your brush. We'll come over to this side and do the same thing. Again, utilize my white every time I need to. Okay. Looking good. Just loading it the same way. Come down here. We're going to go around the base of our beard. Remember this is not your final layer here. We are going to also be outlining this, so you know, don't be too hard on yourself just yet. And then I like to do just a touch under the clover. Again, this is totally up to you as the artist, but I like to come down here and just shadow a bit under the clover here. Because obviously that clover would be casting a bit of a shadow of course you can also go over to your nose and create a little shadow if you wanted to as well and again not the final steps there as well so we'll go clean it up but this is looking really fantastic guys all right I'm gonna wash out my brush Again, super good. And we're gonna go into our black paint and we're just gonna fill in those black shoes right here at the base. So I'm just going to go around here and this will clean up any of your beard that maybe got into your shoe area. Black can be really nice to use because it will just cover up anything you want it. But it's also a little bit intimidating because for the same reason. Before I wash that, I'll put some white on it. And I'll go and I'll give some light to the tops of my shoes here. Okay. Wash it out again. All right, let's go ahead and jump to a detail brush, okay? So that's just a little brush that you have on hand. And I'm gonna go to this darker green, and I am going to put in the stem of my clover, okay? So I'm just going to come right in here, and I'm gonna curve it down, and as I come down to the base, I'm gonna press, okay? So that's my main line there. And then if I want to kind of shape it a little bit at the bottom, thicken it a little bit, I can do that. And then pull it back up or come back down this way and do another layer. Again, remember our greens are a little bit more shy, so Layers, guys, you might need the layers. Take the time to let it dry and then go to another layer if you need to. Okay, all right, fantastic. We got that on. I'm gonna wash my brush again, and we're just gonna keep doing some details here. So I'm gonna go into my black and loosen it up with water, make sure it's nice and thin. 
Okay, really important when we're doing little brush strokes. Okay, and I'm going to start with the nose. And I'm not going to do a full outline. I'm going to come around and then I'm just going to kind of stop my stroke. And then I'm going to pick it up right here and then I'll finish it around this side. Okay, and you can put more pressure on your brush to kind of give a thicker outline here and there. Whatever you want to do, just have fun with it. And then right here I'm going to give a little smile. My gnome is feeling happy today. Oh, I got a little bit of water there, but there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and do some lines around our gnome here. So we're going to come down the edge just like so. And then the next one, so we're going to come and wrap it. The next one, I'm going to start up in the hair a little bit. See that? So we'll just start up here a little ways and then come down. Okay, so really cleaning it up. You can see it just kind of start to make a little more sense. Do the same thing over here. Come up a little bit. Wrap it around. Same thing, come up a little, down. Awesome. Come down here, and as I come around this side, I'm gonna do a fun little curl at the end of the beard, because I just think that's super fun. Come down this side, right into where it meets the shoes. Okay, now let's check out our little hands. I don't want to go all the way around it. Again, I'm just going to do just a little half circle here. Help them stand out a little bit, but no need to go all the way around. But I will come through and I want to really showcase those cute little fingers there. So I'm going to definitely put some in right there. Okay, just like that. And now we're going to do a few lines in our clover. Or around our clover, I should say. So I'm going to come into my clover a little bit. this, come around. They really do just look like hearts, don't they? And this guy is just coming to life here. Okay. Do a line down our stem as well. Again, omit anything that you're not feeling during this process. That's super okay. Rinse that out. I'm gonna come back to my green and just make sure my stem has a nice layer on it. Like I said, if you need to add layers to your um green sections of your painting. Totally do it. Okay, let's go into our hat. I'm going to grab a smaller flat and I want to put polka dots in my hat. Um, that's just what I want to do. You can do any design that you want. You can leave it plain. Again, this is your painting, so you do it however you want. But I'm going to come through and I'm just going to do these polka dots here. Okay, and I'm just going to choose where I want to put these 
and just start putting them in. You can see this is just using your brush like so to get these in. You can have some that are not full circles on the hat. Well, they could be coming off a little bit and that's totally fine too. So I'm just put some in here. Decorating our little gnome's hat. And of course they don't all have to be the same size either. Getting those polka dots in, looking super cute. I'm gonna come over and do a couple up in here, cause this is part of the hat too, right? So probably only be able to do two of them. But once I have them in, I'm gonna go through and do another layer of the, on top of them. just to ensure that they're nice and white. So I'm just gonna spin that brush around. You can see how it's just using my brush here to get the shape, fanning out my bristles, just like I've done all through this painting using all my bristles. Again, this would be cute with stripes. This would be fun with all kinds of different designs. So you do it just however you want. Okay, our polka dots are in. I think I'll come through and give my little clover here a little bit of paint here in the center. Just a little bit more. Brighten it up a little bit. Like we talked about, that's something that you can do too. Those greens need the extra, extra paint. Okay, while that dries, let's go ahead and finish our line around our hat, okay? So I'll get my black on my little detail brush and I'll come down the side of my hat. Okay, give a nice clean edge outline. I'll come over here. I like to do another little swirl to kind of match the swirl that I did on the bottom of the beard. So that's kind of fun if you want to do that. And then down this side my hat and of course the trickiest part is going across the hat but I like to break that up like I've been doing all night and just kind of meet right there all right wash that detail brush out really good Let's go ahead and put some highlights in our clover. So I'm gonna use my white paint and my detail brush. And I'm gonna come over to my clover and just one, then I'll skip a leaf, and I'll do two, then I'll skip another one, and three, just like that. All right, this is so fun. Okay, I'm gonna get some glitter because the last thing we need is a little bit of shine on our clover. So I put some glitter glaze on my palette. Make sure your clover is nice and dry. And then we're just gonna paint. My little highlights are still a little wet, so I'm gonna kind of go around them. We're just gonna paint in our clover. And this is kind of fun because it's gonna look a little bit white. It's a glaze, so as it dries, 
it'll just be clear and you'll be able to see just a very sparkly. I'm going to go down my stem too, just for fun. You'll be able to see a super sparkly clover in the middle there. Okay, friends, we did it. We painted our lucky gnome. Let's sign our name because what could be more important than owning our work and putting our signature on it? I love this gnome. I hope you love your gnome. I would love to see your gnome. So be sure to send us your pictures. You can even tag us on social media, at my little paintbrush, okay? And if you enjoyed this video and enjoyed painting with me, please give my video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we do drop free videos weekly and you won't wanna miss that. Thanks for painting with me, you guys. Have a great day.